This is a slightly longer video. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, I encourage you to use the table of contents in the video description to find the specific information you're looking for. The Learning Hub is BCIT's online learning environment. It has many names. It's made by a company called desire to learn or D2L for short. You may hear an instructor refer to it that way. The actual software that runs it is called Brightspace. You may see that in connection with the Learning Hub. And some of the help that is linked in the description below will refer to that product name. But BCIT officially calls it the Learning Hub. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a quick overview. All pages in the Learning Hub have a similar structure. The very top is called the mini bar, and it's the same on every single page in the Learning Hub. Below that is a menu bar that's context specific to the page you're on. And below that is the main body of the page that contains all the materials for that page. Working from left to right on the mini bar, the first thing you'll notice is a little house icon. That will bring you back to the system homepage for the Learning Hub, the same place you land when you log in. This white space here is the only part of the mini bar that ever changes. When you're in a course page, it will display the name of the course. The next item is this little 3x3 grid. Some people call it a waffle because it looks like that. And as you can see, it's the place where you'll select courses. I'll come back to that in a minute. The next three icons are your notifications. The first one is for messaging. A note about messaging within the Learning Hub. It appears to be email, but is actually internal only to the Learning Hub. You can actually send email out of the Learning Hub, but you can't send email back into the Learning Hub. Make sure you check with your instructor about how they're going to communicate with you, and what email address they're going to use, etc. The next icon is your subscription notifications. You can subscribe to discussion forums and threads and other users' blogs. And when there's a new post, you'll get an indication here. The next icon is for updates. Things like announcements, due dates, end dates, and new grades that have been posted by your instructors. The last item is your personal menu. I'm going to spend a little bit of time here because you can set some settings in here that will make your experience at the Learning Hub your own. If you click on your name, you'll be presented with your personal menu. The top item is your profile. Let's take a look in there. Here you can enter as much information or as little as you like. The choice is up to you, but there are two things I would encourage you to do. If you use a name that's different than the one on the official register, put it here under nickname. Even though the system will still display this as your official name, users that look will see that you have a name that you prefer to use. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is put up a profile picture. That's easy enough to do, just click on the change picture button, go to your computer, and upload the photo. Once it's uploaded, click add, and your photo will be displayed. Once you've made all the changes in here, click save and close. And it takes you right back to the home page. Notice that the name hasn't been changed, but the picture has. Another group of settings in here are the notifications. In here, you can choose how you're notified of different things that happen in the Learning Hub. You can choose how often. You can choose whether or not you receive a text message or an email. The next option on your personal menu is account settings. In here you can set up how things are displayed and where you're located in the world, that sort of thing. You can also set up how discussions will appear, and you can customize some of the settings for your email or internal messaging. The progress option lets you see how you're doing in any particular course. You can choose the courses from the menu on the left hand side. and when you're done working in the Learning Hub, you can log out from your personal menu. There are two ways to find courses in the Learning Hub. If you're on the system homepage and you scroll down, you'll find a list of your courses. That's not particularly useful though, because you may want to move from course to course within the Learning Hub without coming back to the system homepage. That's where the course selector waffle icon comes in. When you click on that, you're presented with a list of courses that you're enrolled in. This list will grow as you are enrolled in more and more courses. If you want to keep a current course close to the top, you can do that by clicking on the pin icon. Once the list grows long enough, you'll also be presented with a search bar where you can search for the course by course name, course number, description, etc. To select a course, just click on the course title from this list. You can tell when you're in a course in the Learning Hub because the mini bar changes. It has the course title in the white space as I indicated earlier. 
The navigation bar immediately below the mini bar also changes. It gives you a menu of course specific tools that you can use. Obviously this one will bring you back to this course homepage from wherever you are in the course. The one you'll probably use the most is called content. This is where instructors will present all the course materials for their course. You can see that the Learning Hub handles different file types. How these file types are displayed is specific to the device you're using. If you're using a desktop or laptop computer, you'll have access to all of them. If you're using a mobile device, your selection will be limited. The next navbar item is the Activities drop-down menu. Here you'll find a list of tools that are used in most courses. Things like discussions, assignments, quizzes, if your instructor decides to use the virtual classroom, and so on. Clicking on any particular item will take you into that item. The Grades tool is self-explanatory. It's like a gradebook for this course. The Course Tools option on the navbar is another drop-down menu that has a series of tools on it. You may or may not use any of these, but some that you'll find useful are the class list, which will allow you to communicate directly with students through the internal email or messaging system. And the Groups option will present the list of groups that you're assigned to in the course. I'll let you explore the others on your own. My Tools is another drop-down menu from the navbar, and again this presents a series of tools. I'll leave you to explore most of these, but you'll find some of them quite useful. The Help option for the navbar takes you directly to a knowledge base built by the Educational Technology Support Group at BCIT. Here you'll find a list of student resources for particular information on the Learning Hub. You can also search this knowledge base for information on the specific item you're looking for. The other course option doesn't have much in the way of resources available for you, but you may find your instructor uses the glossary to define terms within the course. Besides the help option from the navbar, there's other resources available to help you learn how to use the Learning Hub. On the My Tools drop-down menu, you'll find a self-registration option. This presents a series of courses at BCIT that anyone can enroll in. Somewhere in here, probably at the bottom, you'll find the Learning Hub, a guided tour for BCIT students. You click on that link, it takes you to a registration page. Click Register, enter your BCIT email address, and click Submit, and you'll be registered for the course. Once you're registered, it will appear on your list of courses on the Course Selector tool on the mini bar. When you go into the course, it looks just like any other course at PCIT. You can use this course in a number of different ways. You can take the whole course if you want, or you can look for specific information on specific tools that you need help with. The company that makes a software called Brightspace that drives the Learning Hub also makes a series of tutorials. I'll put a link to this YouTube playlist in the description of the video below. So that's a very quick overview of the BCIT Learning Hub and where you can find resources and help to learn how to use the Learning Hub. I hope you found this video useful. Good luck in your studies at BCIT.